Uh, how and why diversified trading works is the emphasis of this particular presentation. And it's funny, you know, diversification is such a common phenomenon in the whole realm of trading, and yet very few people, retail traders especially, consider diversification when it comes to their own personal trading. Yet diversification of your trading strategies is a way to limit your risk. Uh, a lot of times, most diversification is done the traditional way. You know, how, how does a day trader diversify? Well, the traditional approach is to diversify across a series of markets. So, for instance, you'll probably look at uh, part of putting part of your portfolio into more aggressive markets, uh, perhaps emerging markets, uh, things that have higher riskiness to it, uh, more volatile moves, and then you're going to put part of your portfolio into something that's going to more or less guarantee you a return, something like a 30-year bond. Even though the return may be small, or a savings bond of some sort, even though the return may be small, at least it is more or less guaranteed. So that is the traditional way that most people diversify their portfolios to try to minimize their risk and protect your investment. But in a similar fashion, day traders can also diversify across market conditions to limit their risk exposure and protect their investments. Now, it's funny, it, uh, when I first mentioned this to people, they kind of have a blank look on their face because a lot of them have never considered this. And it usually leads them to an aha moment where it's like, yeah, why didn't I think of that? You can actually diversify your trading and protect your investment by limiting your risk exposure by looking at scalp trading, swing trading, and trend trading all at the same time. Those are the three dominant market conditions which the market will have at one or all the time. So by looking at these different market conditions simultaneously, you are actually protecting yourself a little bit as far as your risk goes. And like I said, a lot of traders rarely consider this concept. They tend to put themselves into one of the three trading categories. You know, you, if somebody asks you, what kind of trading do you do? You say, oh, I'm a scalper, or I'm a swing trader, or I'm a trend trader. And they tend to trade according to their label. But there's two problems with this. The first problem is that you're cutting yourself off from additional opportunities. For instance, if you're only looking to be a scalp trader, that may be all well and good when the market conditions are ripe for scalping, but how many times have you scalped in and out of a trade and watched the market, you know, move 10, 20, 30 ticks without you with, and without giving you a subsequent signal? And likewise, if you're a trend trader, how many times have you gotten into a trend trade and the market has fallen flat or it didn't go anywhere for half an hour or an hour or longer and meanwhile it's just chopping back and forth and you're not able to realize any profit because you're trying to trend trade it whereas if you had been scalping at that time you would have done a little bit better so that's that's problem number one the problem the second problem that you have is that if you're only using one signal it's not going to work with every market condition one size does not fit all when it comes to trading. And this is what catches a lot of people by surprise. They think that if you have one signal, one signal is as, as good as the rest, or if you have a relatively effective signal, that it's going to be effective in a scalping environment, or a swing trading environment, or a trending environment. But, as anybody who's been trading for a while knows, that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes your signal will work just fine, and other times you'll be scratching your head wondering why the market is kicking your butt. That's because 
the market conditions are changing and you're trying to use the same signal for every single condition. It's like my grandfather used to say, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then you tend to see everything as a nail. It's the same thing when it comes to trading. So it's actually important to recognize that there are three market conditions, but not all three are equal at the same time. Sometimes the market will be more of a scalping environment. Sometimes the market will be offer up swing trades and sometimes the market will be trending. Your job as a trader is to uh, take advantage of the prevalent market condition by using the right tool for the job. And like I said before, a lot of people have the tendency of thinking, well, my signal is a good signal, it works X percent of the time, I'll just apply it across the board. But you would find that you would have much better success if you looked at the market and said, okay, my signal works best in a scalping environment. So either you're going to limit yourself to scalping environment or you're going to say, I'm going to use this signal for scalping and I'm going to use this signal for swing trades and I'm going to use this signal for trend trading. So the easiest way to uh, modify your trading system is to change your time frames. Most, um, in most cases, shorter time frames work best for scalping trades. Longer time frames work better for swing and trend trades. But this is not the ideal situation because you're still working with the, you know, your only tool is a hammer. So every problem you see is a nail kind of scenario. You need the right tool for the right job. The signal should be customized to reflect the market condition. So uh, scalping markets require different signals than swing trading or trending markets. Now, like I said, uh, when I mention this to people at first, they kind of get a little bit of a puzzled look on their face. But after they think about it for a while, and especially once you start to do it, then you're going to realize that, yes, there is something to this. And you will be surprised, actually, how well it will work for you. And in a moment, I'm going to show you how I do it. But first, before we get into that, the most important thing to remember when you are looking at uh, building a system that has um, multiple signals is that you keep your signals clear, simple, easy to interpret. I can't tell you how many people I come across who get become so obsessed with finding the perfect signal that all they do is pile on another indicator, um, you tweak another indicator, um, look for, a, you know, they buy another software package, the list goes on and on. And sometimes the chart becomes so cluttered, you can barely see the price bars underneath. And I am not kidding you folks, I have seen some real doozies. <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost like a, a bowl of spaghetti has exploded on your chart. You cannot trade that way. Trading is much more than just getting a good entry signal. Listen, I'm going to put your mind at ease right now. If you think that the reason you are not a successful trader right now is because you haven't found the right entry signal, you are wrong. There is much more to trading than finding the perfect entry signal. In fact, there is no perfect entry signal. By definition, the markets only move when they are out of balance. So if you had the perfect signal, you would essentially be ending up balancing the market. It wouldn't take long for traders to figure out what's going on and that you were, and sooner or later the market would be balanced. And then there would 
no longer be any moves. Everybody would be wanting to buy, nobody would be wanting to sell. Everybody would be wanting to sell, nobody would be wanting to buy. And that's not the way trading works. Trading, there is much more to trading than just finding the perfect entry signal. In fact, uh, as any Wall Street trader will tell you, Wall Street is over the moon if they can find a signal that works 55, 60% of the time. Why? Because they know that having a decent signal is important. Don't get me wrong, you, you need to have a reasonably good signal. But it's money management and how you, you're going to manage your trade that is really going to make the difference. All right. So when the market is unfolding um, and prices are coming at you, you have to be able to make a decision quickly and clearly and be able to make that go, no-go decision without any hesitation. And if you're unable to do that, then you need to refine your system to the point where you can actually do that because it is that important. All right, so let me see if I can get you my charts now. And you'll see how I do it. Now, uh, let me walk you through this. This might look a little overwhelming at first, but it really it's not as bad as it seems. What you're seeing here is a, it's actually a system that's been developed to exactly address this issue that we're talking about today. It is called the Diversified Trading System, uh, DTS for short. And the reason it is a diversified system is because we have scalp, uh, tools to pick up scalping trades, tools to pick up swing trades, and tools to pick up trend trades. And I'm just going to go over these briefly so that you can kind of get a feel for the kind of thing that you might want to be looking for when you're looking at developing your own system. So uh, I've actually got six uh, charts on here. There's two markets. On the left, I have the NQ, the NASDAQ. On the right, I have the YM, the mini Dow. And traditionally, I watch uh, four markets. So I've got the NQ, the YM. Sometimes I'll be watching the 6E. Sometimes I'll be watching the British Pound. And I usually watch crude oil. So I have a little bit of diversification among the markets. So I have crude oil, which is going to be my most volatile market. I have the 6E or the British Pound, one of the currency markets, which normally tends to trend a little bit better. So it's a little bit more conservative. And then here in the middle of the road, I have my stock indices. Now, I, I realize you only see the stock indices here. The uh, 6E and the Euro are on my other monitor, but you, you get the idea. So the way this is organized is the two charts at the top, or my charts at the top in general, are my scalping charts. So when I get a scalping signal, and with DTS there's actually a, an audible warning, um, which is, is very helpful when you're looking at different market conditions to have an audible alert to say, you know, scalp, swing, or trend, so you'll know where to look. But at the top here I have my scalping trades, in the middle, I have my swing trades, and at the bottom, I have my trend trades. Now, let's just take a moment here, and we're going to take a look at uh, what this scalper looks like. I'm going to turn this off. I'll address that in just a moment. Now, this particular tool has actually been customized to pick up short-term uh, shifts in price and momentum. and we took great pains to make it easy to interpret. And the way it unfolds is when part of the market conditions are being met, the program actually prints a warning dot, which is like the red dot that you see down here, or these green dots that you see up here. Those are warning dots. Those, When those develop, I'll get the audio alert, and it will tell me that I have part of the conditions of a scalping environment. When the rest of the market conditions are met, I get a triangle and a hash mark, which is a suggested entry point. Now, the triangle tells me that all the market conditions are being met, and then it's up 
to me to decide whether or not I want to take a signal. Now there are some very simple refinements within this, but I can tell you quite instantly looking at the chart whether or not I want to take a signal. Like here for instance, this particular signal right here, that is what we refer to as a first micro-macro crossover. So we, we have these two trend lines on here. The thin one is called the micro line, the thick one is called the macro line. When everything comes into sync and I get a signal, I know there's a good probability that that signal will have some follow through. So very easy to look at, very easy to make a decision off of that. And like I said, the way this chart is organized, it's not only easy to interpret, but the signal itself has been customized to pick up on uh, a scalping environment uh, type of scenario. Let's take a moment here. I'll take a look now at the swing trader. Swing trader is here in the middle. Now you can see it's similar, but it's also different. Uh, here with the uh, scalping, or pardon me, with the swing trading tool, this particular tool, the signals are interpreted the same way, so I don't need to learn a whole new system. It uh, still will print a warning dot when the signal begins to develop. When the rest of the signal parameters are met, I'm going to get a triangle and a hash mark, and then it's up to me to make the decision whether or not I want to take a trade. So as a for instance, up here, we have a, uh, a very good trade setup, and this particular setup is one that we refer to as a down, up, down, and it usually occurs after a trend change. So here we have a trend change, and then we have the market going down, it fires a signal to the upside, and then it fires a signal to the downside. So there it prints our signal, and once I have the trend change, I begin looking for that down, up, down, and I get my signal, and you can see that one had some fairly nice follow through to it. Again, very simple to interpret, no guessing. I can look at it and I can make a decision instantly whether or not I want to take that trade. So those are the kinds of things that you're going to want to look for when you're developing your scalping system or your swing trading system. And remember, as I said, the easiest way to um, customize your parameters is by looking at the time frames, not only looking at the time frame of your chart, making shorter time frames for your scalping tools versus your swing trading tools and your trend trading tools, but also looking at the time frames of the tools themselves. So for instance, if you're looking at perhaps using a moving average crossover system, in your scalping environment, you'll probably want to go with uh, a faster pair or triplet of moving average lines versus something that you would be using for your swing trading and trend trading, where you're going to lengthen the parameters a little bit in order to try to pick up on those swing trading signals or to capture those market swings. Let's take a look at the trend trading tool here for a moment. And uh, this is uh, what we call the Eagle Trend Trader. And once again, you can see it's similar but different. Now, this tool has been developed to try to pick up on emerging trends. And essentially, the signal is the same again. You know, we're, we get warning dots, we get triangle and hash marks when the signal completes. You can see here was a signal that completed, but it never fired. It never went any higher, didn't bring us in, so that's all right no harm, no foul. Here's a signal that did complete and you can see a little bit of a move to the downside but not exactly a huge trend not yet. Obviously these are the kinds of trends that we're trying to take advantage of and uh, again it's the it's the kind of situation where when you look at the chart because the signals are relatively simple and easy to interpret, it's easy to make a decision off of these. So I get the warning dot, I get the triangle and hash mark, it's telling me, okay, the market conditions are ripe, 
So let's take a look at perhaps taking a signal. And after that, the decision becomes mine. Is it a situation where uh, I want to take a trade? And for instance, here we had the market turnover and we're testing the hard edge that we call this the hard edge of the band and we get a hard edge bounce and you can see that there was fairly nice follow through from that. So those are the kinds of things that you want when you are developing your system. Obviously you want to tweak the tools to re pick up on the market condition that you are trying to capitalize on. Now I have a couple other tools on here that I'll just touch on briefly because I know you're going to be wondering what they're about. Uh, here in the top left corner this is a little tool we have called the Trade Forecaster. It's actually a pretty cool little tool. Uh, it's similar uh, idea to what we've been talking about with the whole diversification but what this particular tool does is it tries to tell you what the dominant market condition is and what the next one will be. So right now it says that the trend is the strongest market condition at the moment even though you know the markets are closed now so it's it's probably kind of just stuck on the trend mode from how the market was closing out but it's saying that uh, in about an hour's time it, the conditions are going to change so that it's going to be more of a swing trading environment. Like I said I don't pay too much attention to this in the after hours but it's it's fairly helpful during the session but more important than that remember how I mentioned to you the signal is only part of the equation. The other part of your diversification that you're going to need is your risk management and your trade management. All right, you're going to need all the pieces of the puzzle in order to make everything work. So, uh, once again, you, we we have this tool here um, <laughs> that does it for for you, but you can also do it manually. Uh, and what? First, let me talk a little bit about the risk management itself. A lot of people make the mistake of risking far too much money on their trades. You may or may not have heard that you should only be risking, well certainly no more than 5% of your trading capital on any single trade. And ideally you should only be risking about 1 or 2 percent. Now I realize if you're a small trader and you're trading you know a $10,000 account or less, risking 1 or 2 percent is not exactly going to be feasible. But you should still endeavor not to risk more than 5 percent of your capital on a trade. The reason is you're going to, if you hit a series of losers, which we'll all do from time to time, you could seriously damage your account. And yet I see traders all the time saying, oh I'm going to be conservative, I'm going to limit my risk, I'm only going to trade two contracts or I'm only going to th trade three contracts. And that is the death knell for your trading account. Let me repeat that. If you are trading the same number of contracts on your account regardless of how much risk there is you are going to wipe out your account. The reason is you end up risking the same um, um, you end up risking more say if we're going to short here and and cover up here. If you're trading say three accounts or three contracts all the time you're going to risk you know a certain amount here let's say it's a thousand dollars. But if you risk, let's say you decide to risk it up to here and your the risk from here to here was a thousand dollars and the risk from here to here is two thousand dollars, well if you're trading three accounts all the time or three contracts all the time you're going to be risking three thousand dollars to do this trade and you're going to be risking six thousand dollars to do this trade here. Right? So 3000 for this trade, 6000 for this trade. Or whatever. I'm just using thousands as, as uh, for easy math. 
if this if this big trade goes sideways, of course, you're going to hurt yourself a whole lot more than if this trade goes sideways. So what should you do? The prudent trader only risks what they can afford to lose. So if you're trading, say, uh, a $10,000 account and you want to limit your risk, oh, I don't know, let's say you're going to limit your risk to 3%. So that means that every single trade, you will only risk $300. So let's say, uh, for instance, that this trade from here to here is worth $300. That means you are only going to trade one contract. If this trade from here to here is worth $600, but you can only afford three to lose three hundred dollars, then you're not going to take this trade. All right, that's a very important concept to get your head around. And likewise, let's say the trade works out like this, where it's hundred and fifty dollars from here to here, and you can afford to risk three hundred. Well, then you are going to take two contracts. All right, so like I said, very important concept for you to uh, understand. It will make the difference between uh, your success and, a fail, uh, success and failure as a trader. I can virtually guarantee that if you ignore this concept, you will fail at trading. I can't guarantee that it will make you successful, but I can guarantee that it will sink you if you do not pay attention to this. It is that important. The last key to diversification is your trade management. And just like your signal, your trade management has to be very clear and concise. Now, uh, this particular tool here that you see on the right, this is what we call the trade manager. It does all these kinds of things for you automatically. But like I said, you can do these things manually as well. Let's say, I'm going to just turn this on here. These blue dots that you see here, this is my, at the moment, it's my average true range. So average true range multiplier of 2.618, fancy little Fibonacci number in there for a period of 14. I can adjust this however I want to be more or less aggressive. A trade manager will automatically exit uh, any active position when one of these blue dots gets tripped. So it's designed to make trading multiple contracts, multiple markets at the same time uh, simple. You know, it's, I can quite literally trade all 12 charts uh, simultaneously with this particular tool because it figures out my position size, it ex or I do the order entry, and after that it manages my trade for me. But you can do these things on a smaller scale as well. Right? You can, if you're just starting out, you shouldn't be trading four markets. You should probably be concentrating on one or maybe two. And then as you get a handle on those, then you can look at uh, adding a few more. But the important thing is that, as I said, you have a system in here that you're able to look at it and you're able to say, yes, uh, I'm going to exit at such and such a point, that you don't leave uh, your trade management to guesswork. And it can be something as simple as, um, you know, I'm going to trail my stop two bars back. So here's my entry, one, two, two bars back. I'm going to put my stop above that high. And as the market goes down, I'll trail my stop. So it's always two bars back. All right, so that very, very simple uh, stop trailing methodology. It's actually fairly effective as well. But the point is, that you do need something that is going to be simple, be clear, and uh, something that you can execute immediately without any guesswork. Because <laughs> probably next to uh, poor uh, money management, poor position size or, or risk control, uh, is poor trade management as far as what is going to make or break you as a trader. 
So there you have the three uh, ways of diversifying your trading across uh, three different market conditions. So you're looking at scalp trading, swing trading, and trend trading, and you're also able to diversify across the markets by looking at conservative markets, middle of the road markets, and even more aggressive markets. Like I would not suggest to anybody that you trade, say, gold and crude oil and make those your solo markets because you're looking at two extremely volatile markets. If you hit, great, fantastic. You'll make a bundle of money. When you don't, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> it's going to be a, a lot harder. <laughs> All right. Now, I, I kind of breezed through some of those um, uh, points. I wanted to leave a little bit of time here if, we, if there were any questions. So... Um, let me see here. Uh, there's a question here from Chris. Can you explain the significance of using the six tick Renko bars for scalping and the eight tick for swing trading? Absolutely. Good question, Chris. Now, I did mention um, that the easiest way to simulate a scalping environment, a swing trading environment, and a trend trading environment is to adjust your uh, bar size. So that's essentially what we're doing here. These are the mean Renko bars that you that I have displayed here. Uh, the mean Renko bars are a tool that comes standard with the DTS system. It's uh, what it does. Mean Renko bars they're essentially a blend. I wish they'd given it a sexier name than that, but <laughs> it's essentially a blend of Renko bars and candlestick bars. So it takes all the strengths of a Renko bar and its ability to identify ranges and um, you know support and resistance areas. You know, like you look at this, very obvious. We got resistance up here. Very obvious. We have support down here. Um, so it takes the advantages of the Renko bars, but it also gives you the feedback that you would get in candlestick charts. So, for instance, we can see that this is a rather bearish looking candle. It's also like an engulfing candle. And so you get an engulfing candle like that and you get a break of a support area and then we get a signal to sell a few ticks later. Yeah, okay, that's probably going to be a pretty good signal and lo and behold, away it goes. So uh, what we've done here, uh, we did a lot of experimentation with these different uh, charts to come up with standardized settings for most of the markets. And the scalping tool is set at six ticks. And again, it helps interpret the scalp signal because the signals will tend to develop a little bit faster, which is what we want from our scalping tool. The swing trading tool is set at eight ticks, which is middle of the road. And then the trend trading tool is picked up at 12 ticks. And the idea there is to filter out some of the market noise and pick up emerging trends. Now, if you're not using the mean Renko bars and you're using, say, time charts, you can simulate this by perhaps looking at a five minute chart for your scalping tool, a 15 minute chart for your swing trader, and maybe a 30 or 60 minute chart for your trend trader. So, those are the kinds of things, uh, an easy way to adjust your um, system to re reflect the different market environments. Because obviously, an hourly chart is going to look different than a five-minute chart. You're going to get a lot less noise, and hopefully you'll be able to see a trend as it's building. Um, the question here, can you use Renko bars? Well, yes, you know, the charting style itself is not um, going to make or break your system. There's a lot, like, don't get me wrong, there's lots of advantages. Um, I really like these mean Renko bars. Um, but if 
your eye is toward candlestick charts, then great. If you're looking at cocky charts, fantastic. Um, the again, so many people get so caught up in thinking that you know if I just found the right combination of things, I would be successful. But the only true combination of things is that you have a decent entry signal, and you combine that with good risk management i.e. don't risk more than you can afford to lose i.e. don't risk more than five percent of your account ever and combine that with good trade management if you do those three things then you're going to be well on your way and you're going to start printing some numbers in the black for a change but are you going to be successful if you look at Renko bars versus a five minute chart or regular candlestick charts no, that's not going to make a difference. I Before I was introduced to these mean Renko bars, I traded a five-minute candlestick chart forever. And before that, I traded a, a, day, um, a daily bar chart. So it's not that the chart style is going to make or break it for you. If you, look, if you have a chart style that you can decipher a decent signal from, then go with that chart style. If you're looking for a chart style, I can strongly recommend these mean Renko bars. They are excellent at, uh, you know, condensing the market information, showing you, like I say, clearly showing you support and resistance areas. That's really one of their strengths. Is you can see quite plainly support and resistance. You can see when the market is breaking down, and you get a little bit of feedback because, like I said, they have the the power of a range bar or the Renko bar combined with the feedback and the sensitivity that you would get from a candlestick chart. But will it, you know, make you rich if I tell you to change, hey everybody go buy mean Renko bars. <laughs> Is that going to make you rich? No, no, no. There's I wish it I wish it were that easy, but no, there's other things involved. Uh, here's a question. What account size is needed to trade the multiple market as shown? Um, excellent question. Uh, because these are day trading uh, markets or we're day trading these markets, uh, the tick size is going to be paramount in uh, determining how many of these markets you're able to trade. I'm a big fan of the NASDAQ and the mini Dow the NQ and the YM. They're only five dollars a tick so they're very affordable. Uh, they make the exact same moves as the E-mini but whereas the E-mini is twelve fifty a tick, at five dollars a tick I can afford two contracts instead of one. And depending where my risk, uh, where my stop loss order is, sometimes I can even afford three contracts where I might only be able to afford one in the E-mini. So it gives me a little bit more flexibility. Uh, I much prefer trading a multiple uh, number of contracts versus a one lot. I find it really, really difficult to manage a one lot. You know, you hit your profit target. Do I take profit? Do I roll my stop? What do I do? But if you've got two or three contracts, well, you can punch out. Take take contract on, or take profit on half your contracts and roll the stop to break even. And if it goes to the moon, fantastic. At least you're still in the trade. But if you're trading a one lot, then it's uh, a lot more difficult uh, to scalp, swing, and, and trend trade all at the same time. Because sometimes you're going to be uh, in all three conditions, right? Like if the market is picking up in a trend, this will happen to me a lot, actually. When the market begins trending, well, then obviously we're going to get uh, swings during that trend, and we're going to get scalp trades during that trend. So I'll go in with a trend trade, and then you know maybe a minute later or 30 seconds later I'll get a signal for a swing trade and a scalp trade so I'll punch into those and I'll take profit as as those go on and in the meantime the trend just keeps going and going and going so you need a little bit of capital to allow you to uh, take advantage of all of those um, when I'm doing all four accounts here and we're we're doing it you know uh, public on a on a sim account we're usually simming a $25,000 account uh, as all things trading related, the more money the better. Right? You don't need to, to spend it all, but the more money you have in your account, the more flexibility it would give you. 
but uh, $10,000 would probably be the least amount of money that you want to look at in order to scalp, swing, and trend trade at least one market. And if you're trading in the YM and the NQ, you may even be able to sneak two. Um, here's a question. I use my proprietary indicators with Heiken Ashi. Do you think the DTS will work well with that? Um, you know what? That is perhaps the only charting style I haven't tried on here. Let me show you. Um, like the DTS system, it will provide signals on practically any chart style. So let's say, just for kicks, um, oh, I don't know. Let's let's do a five-minute chart. Uh, that's easy. Where are you? Minute. Five minutes. So here's a five-minute chart on our scalping tool. You can see it's still generating signals. Right here was a nice first micro macro crossover. Here was a nice signal that printed the warning dot triangle hash mark. It had a little bit of follow through to it. Um, I know a fellow who trades tick charts using DTS, and he does very well. I can't say for certain whether or not uh, it will work with your particular charting style. Uh, but it works with practically any chart style, with the exception of point and figure charts. And there is one other chart style that escapes me at the moment. I think it might be line break where we just get, oh no, it works with line break too. You see here was a warning dot. Yeah, well, it looks like it actually works really well with line break. Here's a warning dot. Here's a, the triangle on hash mark. Caught that move very nicely. Here's another one. Caught that move pretty well as well. So uh, it, it everything but point and figure and one other chart style. So I would say it probably would, but of course I, I can't guarantee it without actually trying it. Uh, here's a question. Are the mean Renko practical for trading slower moving stocks? Yes, actually we have a, a stock trader in the indicator warehouse fold, uh, Michael Filigera, and he's trading Apple and Google and oh well those are a little bit faster, but um, yeah, he's short answer yes. He's trading stocks with um, DTS and with the mean Renko bars. The mean Renko bars, like I say, it's it's just a charting style. It's not. It certainly has advantages. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the the chart style itself that's going to make or break you as a trader. It's the chart, the signal, the money management, and the risk management. But to answer your question, yes, definitely, um, the mean wrinkle bars will work on stock charts. Uh, let's see here. I have a question. On the scalping charts, you have three colors. Oh, I see Stephanie already fielded that. Yes, the uh, just quickly, the... Again, this is something that we've programmed into it to make it easy to interpret. I know when the bars are green, it's a bullish environment. When the bars are red, it's a bearish environment. When the bars are yellow, the conditions are too neutral for me. I don't really want to trade. Uh, now, there are a couple of exceptions to it, which I'm not going to get into now because it's, this isn't about DTS training. But again, the whole point is to be able to look at a chart and be able to make a decision instantaneously whether or not you're going to trade or not trade. What I should have done is I should have pulled up a chart from some of our past students <laughs> so that you could see what a mess a chart can become. <laughs> 